Lord, in prayer. Our Father, I love you tonight, and I sure do thank you for your grace and your mercy. I pray, dear Father, that you would bless us. Thank you for these people that I love, dear Father, that we're able to come together and worship and to praise you tonight. Now, Father, would you be with us? Would you guide and direct us? It's only that you can. Father, I know we have some that's traveling. I pray that you'd be with them. Father, I want to thank you, Father, for Miss Cindy and those that, Lord, was with our boys and girls this week. I, I want to pray you'd bless them and thank you for them that give their time to them. I pray, dear Father, that we'll be able, dear Father, to give you the praise and the honor tonight for all that you've done. Now, Father, be with us now. Bless Brother Curtis as he leads us in singing. I pray, Lord, that you'd anoint that, that we may be able to worship and to praise you and to thank you for all that you've done. Now, Father, be with us now. In your marvelous name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, Brother Curtis, you come on. Amen. all get a, a book and stand up and turn to page number 113. Glory to his name. It makes a difference, brother. Yes, Tony. it does. That blood will make a difference Praise in your Lord. life. Let's turn to page number 196. 196. Will you meet me over yonder? Hadn't heard it in a while, but I tell you what, I'm glad I'm bound for that city. 196. You got it? Everybody sing out. I am bound for that. Let's get started. Brother Tony, can you help me on that too? I, I want to sing it. I am bound for that right city. Will you please? 
If I'm being honest, I'm tired from this journey.
Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 3. Amen. It's terrible that the knee that you didn't have operated on hurts worse than the one you did. Amen. 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 Matthew chapter number 3. I've had my mind, and of course Sunday morning we preached about that Jesus loves the children. And I'm glad that I am a part of God's family. No matter how old we get, we're still God's child. <laughs> now, let that just settle in. Amen. My boys, don't matter to me how old they get, they're still my children. Amen. And uh, every now and then, I'll bring them close to me and I'll kiss them on cheek. Amen. They're still part of me. And I should have, and it's kind of odd. They don't mind their mother kissing on the cheek, but kind of, you know, amen, no. But uh, I'm not strong enough now to wrestle them down and do it. So I admit they love me. But I'm going to read verses number in Matthew 3, verses 16 and 17. And of course, this is our Heavenly Father as he's making an announcement about his son. And I never thought about this until the day in my office, that not only is the father talking about his son as the world's savior, but that's his son. Say amen. And uh, I don't think there's any father that loves their son more than he does. And sometimes we miss it when we don't include that there's two elements to this, amen. That there is a heavenly father, but then there is his father that is talking to his son. In verse 16, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Our Father, I pray that you'd bless us tonight. I pray, Lord, that you, the good God of heaven, would be with us. In your wonderful, marvelous name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to take my time tonight, and I want to talk to you about what every child wants to hear. Regardless of how old or young that you are, what every child wants to hear. Paul made this statement in 2 Timothy chapter 4, in verses 6 through 8, when he knew that his time was nearing. Paul said that I have fought a good fight. Now, in other words, Paul is saying, I did not turn and run, but I stood and fought a good fight. Now, this is something that Paul is saying about himself, but I believe that he wanted also to hear his heavenly father say the same thing, that Paul said, I fought a good fight. Paul said, I have finished my calling. That is uh, what God had called me to do. He said, I've done it to my very best. And I've reached the end of it, but I've been faithful. He said that about himself, but I believe he wanted to hear the Heavenly Father say that. And then he said, I have kept the faith. That is, I believe that Paul was saying that I have stayed true to the voice of God. I've stayed true to the Word of God. And I have stayed true to the stand that God had placed for me. Now listen, I'll get it there in a minute. There's some things I want to hear my Heavenly Father say about me, and I hope I can hear them. But here's one thing I want him to say, that I didn't wobble, as the old-timers would say, on the axle. Say amen. amen. That no matter what times was around me, that I stayed faithful amen. to what God called me to, and the way God, listen, I come in a shout, and I won't go out of shout. Amen. I came in a praise, and I want to go out of whether anybody does or not. I want to praise and thank him for all that God has done for me. 
I believe there's one thing that every son wants to hear. I believe he wants to hear his dad to tell him that he's proud of him. Amen. That's in us. I, amen. And I called one of my boys last night, and I said, son, I said, I want you to be honest with me. I said, uh, do you know daddy's proud of you? And here's what he said. He said, daddy, I know it, but I sure do like to hear it. Amen. Boy, that's your proud. My daddy was not much with words like that. But when he told me, it meant something to me. Amen. Amen. And I have tried, and every now and then, I remember several years ago, uh, I text my boys, and I told them how much I loved them. And, and uh, they called mom, and they said, uh, Tracy, they said, there's something wrong with daddy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They, I guess they thought I was a dying or something. I don't know. But I just went, and every now and then, I take time, and and text them, and I let them know. I want it, not only do I want them to verbally, but I want it, dear friend, the word it's written down, that I'm proud. And every boy wants to hear their daddy, and I want to hear my heavenly father say, I'm proud of you. I am proud. Now, here's where I have a little trouble. What does daughters want to hear? Then heavenly girls. Well, I'm led through our church, and I have some girls that's just like daughters. To Trace and I. So I kind of lean on my granddaughters. I believe they want their moms to, and them to be best friends. I thought about when uh, Trace and I got married, and her and her mother would talk every day, every day. And someday I'd talk, and I asked her, What do y'all talk about? What do you find? <laughs> Say amen now, ladies. What do you find? To talk? She said, Well, she's my best friend. And I mean, they'd talk, and some Saturdays they'd just go off together. They'd have a good time. And I believe that uh, daughters wants to know that her and their mothers are best friends. I believe from their dad they want to know that their dad thinks they're beautiful. I believe they want to know that their dads think they're smart and talented. And I believe they want to know that they are enough on their own. Can I hear an Amen. My granddaughters, two of them, sit down with me several years ago, and uh, they know how to, Miss Lord, to embarrass me they, real quickly. And uh, they got talking about dating, and, uh, and then they got into some subjects that's out of my league. Can I hear an amen? I said, now, you've got to talk to me more about them things. Amen. I said, but here's what I told them. I said, you've got to realize you don't want, need anybody else to make you who you need to be. You're all right on your own. Say amen. And I think we need to take, and I believe they want their dads. What does every child desire? I believe every child desires to have private time with their parents. Trace and I now, we have been staying a lot in Alabama because uh, the house there is on one level. I don't have to climb up any stairs. And I mean, it thundered and lightning last night. And I mean, the, the wind was blowing. And I asked Tracy a question. I said, if we could go back when we first got married with our boys, what's something you'd want to maybe do different? And all of us at the same time say, well, maybe we'd want to spend more time with them. Amen. And I believe that every child wants, I remember when Daddy and I, now we would go to cattle auctions. And we would, now Daddy liked Pepsis and you can't be all right. Amen. I like Coca Cola. So amen. And uh, we'd get the little small ones and we'd drink half of it out and we'd get some peanuts and pour in that. Amen. Now, if you hadn't done that, honey, you're not, you hadn't lived. You just hadn't lived. And we'd have the best time. And Daddy would tell me, he said, Son, don't raise your hand or else we bought something. Amen. Because we was at the Kellogg's. But what I'm saying is, we had time with each other. We got to spend time. And I believe every child, I believe every child wants affection. Amen. I want affection for my Heavenly Father. But I want to have affection for my boys and with my girls. I believe, we, I believe every child wants conversation. If I want conversation with my children, think how much my Heavenly Father wants conversation with me. I'm not talking about texting. I'm talking about sitting down and having a conversation. 
We've lost the art of just talking with each other. We've lost the art of just having a conversation with each other. And uh, I believe they desire the heaven, but then I believe they have a desire to have the knowledge that they are loved. I believe every child needs to know that they're loved. I believe they need to know that they're special. I believe they need to know that their mother and daddy loves them with all of their heart. And I don't care how old they are, they need to know that they're loved by their mother and daddy. Well, I believe they need to know that they're valuable. Either we'll let our children know they're valuable or somebody else will. Say so, amen. I believe they need to know, dear friend, that they are valuable. Not only are they valuable to us and they're valuable to the family, but I believe we need to teach them they're valuable to the Lord. That the Lord loved us so much and their value was so great until God gave His Son and His Son gave His life to where we could be saved by God's wonderful grace. But then I thought about Jesus, heard from His Father. What did his father say? Look at your text. First of all, his father said, he is mine. <laughs> he said, this is mine. I remember one time, now, I could hit a baseball, Brother Jackie. I could hit a baseball. But I went through, I couldn't even, listen, if you put it on, I was in the Pony League. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even hit off the tee. I just couldn't. I went through a period, I couldn't. And uh, I went up to bat, and I, I, and I maybe not have, but it seemed like all the fans said, oh, no. And I went through about a month. I couldn't hear anything. And in the distance, I heard somebody say, that's my boy. <laughs> it didn't mean I, I was the best. I wasn't at the time. Amen. It didn't mean, dear friend, that he thought I was going to get a hit. I, he probably didn't. But he said, that is mine. And can I tell you, it's wonderful to have a heavenly father that even when we stumble and we fall, for him to turn and say, that is mine. mine. Hallelujah. Amen. Even when we are not successful, even when we fail, the heavenly Father does listen. His Father turned his back on him because he became sin. But he did that to where he'll never have to turn his back on you and I. What a Savior. I've lived long enough, I have seen parents turn their back on their children. Amen. Some things I don't like to think about. But there's been a time or two that, that my children did some things that embarrassed me. In fact, one told me, they said, after I tell you what I'm going to tell you, well, I don't know about it. And after he told me, I walked him, hugged him, and kissed him. He said, Daddy, you don't, I said, oh, you don't understand. You're mine. Can I, just, can I just pause and say this? Boy, I'm glad I got away from that religious crowd that I don't care. Listen, if you brush your teeth wrong, dead, say amen. Amen. Can I tell you, if there's none righteous, no, not one. For we all, listen, you might not have failed like the other person, but we all have stumbled and we all have failed. And the heavenly Father said, that's mine. Woo! <laughs> uh, that's mine. That's, hey, he belongs to me. Old devil said, well, he did wrong. The devil said, Jesus said, ain't none of your business. He's mine. He belongs to me. I can't get over that. I got to say, hey, I'm glad he said that, that he's mine. But then he said that he is beloved. That is, that was the Father's way to show his affection for his son. He loved him always. Not just now. He loved him always. Amen. Sometimes I do our girls this way. And because I want my girls to know that there's a way that they're to be treated with respect. Can I hear an amen? And sometimes I go and hold their hand, and that's my way of telling them I love them. Why? 
because that's what my daddy, Miss Niece, did to me. We'd be riding down the road, and that big old, he had the biggest hand, and he'd reach over there, and he'd squeeze it. And I'd look, and he'd wink at me. I knew exactly what he meant, that he loved me. The heavenly father looked down at his son. He said, that's mine. And then he reached down and just grabbed his hand and winked at me. He said, he is my beloved. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I like that word, beloved. That is a tender term. That is a affectionate term. That is a term that lets people know that belongs to me. They're mine. I'm proud of them. They're part of me. Well, I'm glad that he said, but then you'll find, and by the way, not only did that mean they loved me, but his love was endless for him. You see, my love for Tracy had a beginning. I can tell you what she was wearing the first date we had. Amen. And I liked it. Say amen. Jesus didn't have a beginning with his son because they always had been. Can I hear hallelujah? They will not have an ending because he always shall be. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And by the way, his love for you had no beginning. He loved you before the foundation of the world was ever formed. Before we ever, dear friend, was birthed from our mothers and daddy, Jesus knew us, and I'm glad that Jesus loved us, and his love for his son was eternal, and I praise him, and I thank him for the depth of his love. Not only does he love his son that way, but he loves you and me. Thank God for the death. But then notice what he said. He said, I am well pleased he could, he could have just said i'm happy with him amen he could have just said well i'm pleased he said i am well pleased now this was not spoken to his son in private this was spoken to him where the world could hear it he said that's him in case in case you missed it that's him and then he said, I'm well pleased. He used the phrase, I am. That was a phrase of authority. I can't use that. And that mean the same thing Jesus does. He said, I am authority. In other words, Jesus is saying, I cannot lie because I am the I am of the universe. And I'm saying that's him. I'm well pleased with my son. And I'm glad, dear friend, he has authority. Kind of, but then he declared, d- declared how proud he was. He said, I'm well pleased. Now understand, this was the beginning of Christ's ministry. <coughs> what is he pleased with? Jesus has not opened the blinded eyes yet. He has not healed the lepers. He has not raised the dead. He hadn't done any of those things. What is he pleased about? Because just him being his son is enough. Now that ought to start a camp meeting. That ought to, I mean, we ought to lose our, and by the way, before we ever do one thing for Christ, just us being who we are is enough. He loves us. Look, 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 look. I don't have to earn God's love. Amen. Amen. I don't have to get out here and work my head off and say, Lord, look at here. Look what I'm doing. Hey, I'm doing what nobody else should know. No, no. He looks at me and I stand on my own. He said, that's enough. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. What a, what a Savior. What a Savior. That's enough. But here's what, in closing, I want to hear. This is what I want to hear when I stand before the Lord as my Savior. I tell Tracy sometimes, my heart is to come and just be calm. Well, I got got that, (laughs) I got that little camp meeting in me. Say amen. 
I got that. Oh, I got that little stirring. And by the way, Holy Ghost. I do, hey, hey, I'd rather feel him a stern, hey. And then the, but uh, no, there's three things I want to hear. First of all, I want to hear him to say, son, you was faithful. Not the best. I'm not in competition with anybody. Say amen. I know that my preaching is out of style with some. That's, that's all right. It was a good day, Brother Jackie, that I just was glad of how God called me. <laughs> Say amen. God didn't, I hear some preachers, preach, they never break a sweat. I wish I could do that. No, I don't. That ain't the way God called me. But I do want to hear the Lord say unto me that he was faithful. Say amen. I want him to hear him say that I was faithful to his word. No matter the season. Say amen. We live in a religious world that is like this. They flow with the seasons. We need somebody like this. That no matter what the seasons come and go, no matter what is popular or unpopular with the so-called church community, that we stay as God has called us. We need somebody to be steady and sure and steadfast. In these, let's say, that is to be faithful to his word. This word, this Bible that I have before me is the inerrant and the perfect word of God. Now, let me just make an announcement. It does not need anybody to approve of it. Why? It's forever settled in heaven. Before the, world, before the word ever become flesh, it was settled in heaven. And I'm glad, dear friend, I want to be faithful to this word says some things that bothers me because it corrects me. Now, now let me just make an announcement. You can't get around God's word. If Jesus makes a statement, I don't care how modern this generation is, his statement still stands. Say amen. I'm glad that I want to be faithful, but I want to be faithful to his will. That is to follow him and not people. To be faithful to the will of Almighty God. There is people down through my life that has tried to change me to yield to what they want. But they didn't call me. And I'm not being stubborn or mean. But I just need to be steadfast and be faithful to His Word. Be faithful to His will. But then be faithful. And by the way, I want everybody to look. I want everybody to look. We live in a favor generation, even religiously. That you come along with my crowd, and I promote you in places. Can I just make an announcement? If the Pope called me to preach behind him, I'd do it. Boy, amen. Now, I wouldn't bow to him, but I'd preach the truth. A lot of my brethren would write me off. But God didn't tell me to choose why I preach. He just said, preach. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> amen. Just preach. And by the way, that ain't going to happen. So <laughs> let me let me explain. That ain't going to happen. I'm just saying, dear friend, I've been to the place and said, well, you preached over there, you can't preach over here. You preach where God sends you. Say amen. And I am thankful. I want to be faithful to his word, to his will. I want to be faithful to his way. 
that is, I was true to him as a Christian. That is, I didn't label myself. I want others to label. And by the way, that's what Christian first came from, is they called them first Christian. What I believe is in Antioch, I believe, if I remember right. They were called Christians first. They didn't label themselves. Christian is Christ-like. Say amen. Well, I want to hear, I was at number two, I want to hear the Lord say that I remain true. I remain true. That is, when the blessings were flowing, I was true. It's easy to be true when the blessings are flowing. Can I hear an amen? It's easy to be true. But then when the battles were coming, that we just stay true to the precious word of the Lord Jesus. I had a man one time that, that was wanting to do something that God's word said he wasn't qualified. And he met with me, and he talked to me about that. And I, I made this statement to him. I said, if you, can, if you can just give me wiggle room, I'll do it. He said, I can't. I said, well, why do you think I can't? We must be faithful to God's word. And when the battles come, don't bend, don't bow, don't back up. But stand on the precious word of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is funny, but I tell you, and you don't know where it's at. But years ago when I was young, I was a church wanted me to come preaching and try out for it, so I, and so I did. And they met with me, and I mean, boy, they was putting all kind of restrictions. And I just sitting there listening. And now, if you knew my daddy, now he did. My daddy was straight. Amen. I could go into places, and I didn't have to. Uh, I didn't have to tell them what I was for. If they knew daddy, they knew where I stood. And one man got up and said, "Well, he ain't gonna do that. That's Lori's boy." I like that. I like that. But more than me and Roy's boy, I'm his boy. I belong to Jesus. When the blessings are flowing, remain true. When the battles are coming, remain true. Well, when the burdens are heavy, remain true. You pray, preacher, have you been perfect in that? No. But I strive to be. Then I close with this. I want to hear the Lord say, I was faithful, I remain true. But I want to hear him say that I gave my best to my family. I gave my best to my family. I believe that the earthly family, the church family, is so close, it's hard to make distinctions. But my first responsibility is not to the church, it's to my earthly family. That's who God gave to me. Amen. We just have a little problem in the place I was at. And they was wanting to bring my family in on it and run them through the ringer. And I told them. I said, if you want to run me through the ringer, that's fine. But my family's off limits. Can I hear an amen? What would you say about Miss Tracy? She can take care of herself. Say amen right there. Amen. 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 No, may I be faithful. I want to be faithful to my home. I want to be the dad and the husband that God wants us to be. Not a dictator. Amen. Amen. Not a bully. Amen. But a dad and a husband that God... I want to tell you something. If a man loves his wife, he wants more for her than he wants for himself. Say so, amen. Tracy laughs at me because if it goes somewhere, somewhere to eat and she said, babe, where are we going? I said, where do you want to eat? Don't matter to me. And I say, now look, I'm going to park right over here when you make your mind up where we're eating. Now, I used to do this, Miss Debbie, I don't do it no more. I got in trouble. And then when we go eat where she wanted to eat and they bring the food, I tell her, I, didn't, I really didn't want to eat here. I don't, amen. I didn't do that once or twice and, and I got it wrong. But may we be faithful to our home. But may we be faithful to our church family to give it our very, very best. Amen. I don't know about you, but it's a privilege being a pastor. It's a privilege. I like it. I like it. I love preaching better, but I like being a pastor. I want to help people, lift them up in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and may we give. I want the Lord to say, son, you gave your family the best, but you gave your church the best. How we need for folks today to give the house of God their very, very best. Then I'll close with this. But may I give my little family our best, our boys and girls. <coughs> Trace and I, always on special occasions, and the church is so wonderful to let us do this, that we'll all, all we'll go get candy and things, and we get bags, and and uh, we was making it. And I said, Tracy, and years down the road, when our ministry so I'm gonna miss that. I love making those little baskets up. First of all, I like it because I get to taste. Can I hear an amen? But then to see the boys and girls as they get them and they go through them. Say amen. Amen. We need to give our boys and girls not our second best, but our very best. One of the Gospels talks about that when Jesus went out in the ship, that they was little ships. That was following him. Amen. I'll never forget. I was at a place and I didn't know him. But there was a dead end. Sometimes at uh, recreation things, sometimes parents aren't the best in the world. They, they get aggravated. And, and uh, I saw this little boy watching his daddy. As his daddy was just, I mean, just, just giving the ref and people fits about things. And the next inning, that little boy went out, and he was just hunting for something. And some little something happened, and he just kicked dirt on that ref. He was probably nine, ten years old. And this, his parents went, and the mom said, why did you do that? He said, well, daddy did. Amen. They're watching us. Lord, when I get to heaven, let me hear that you gave those little ones. Your very best. And one of these days, all of us will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will give an answer to Him. I know we hadn't been perfect. I'm talking to me. But Lord, may I be faithful. May I remain true. And may I give my family my best. Our Father, I thank You for Your Word and for the sweet spirit that was here, I praise you for that. Father, would you bless us? Father, would you be with us? Lord, may we forever be able to keep in our hearts and minds that one day we will hear you speak to us about our works and our labor. Father, may we give you our best. May we remain true and faithful to your word. Thank you for new life and what it means to me. Thank you for the testimony and, yes, the spiritual reputation that it has of being a place of worship. And I praise you for it. In your marvelous, marvelous name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope this was a blessing. This is what I want to hear. And I hope all of us would keep in our heart and mind. We'll stand before him one day. May God say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. God, be sure to be with us in Sunday school. Let's pray for Brother Hewlin and his family as he takes care of his brother. And his brother is staying in his home. So let's pray for him. And the Brother Jeff and Sandra as they take care of Brother Johnny. And uh, Miss Lily, let's pray for her. And if she's listening tonight, we love Miss Lily. Amen. We're praying for her, that God will bless her. Amen. God bless you on the Sunday for Sunday school is my prayer. Thank you.